and friends from the fraternity and of course our guest speaker architect Atta Pon Sumali from Thailand. I welcome all of you to the third lecture in the lecture series titled Global Connect, Exchange and Engage hosted by Dr. Bhanu Ben Nanavati College of Architecture. I'm Professor Dhanashree Sardesh Pandey, course coordinator for Masters in Digital Architecture. Welcoming all of you on behalf of BNCA. I'll take some time and introduce our guests to the parent trust under whose ages we operate. Atta, the Bhanuban Nanavati College of Architecture belongs to Maharshi Karve Sri Shikshin Sansthan, a 125 years old institute, which is working into education of women, more towards empowering women through education. This was initiated by Maharshi Karve. Maharshi is a very revered title in Marathi. It's, it's kind of uh, known in Marathi. Maharshi would mean in otherwise in other language as well, is known as a revered saint. So it was this saintly figure, a social reformer, Anna Dhondok Keshav Karve, who started empowering women and especially widow and destitutes way back in 1897. Today, this whole institute has flourished with 62 subsets. And under its ambit, about 30,000 girl students get educated every year. The Architecture Institute, named as Dr. Bhanu Ben Nanamati College of Architecture, was initiated by our founder principal, Dr. Anurag Kashyap. And today, is, it is in its 27th year. We work on very specific agendas. We work on breaking stereotypes. And because of the legacy, legacy of our founder, Anna Karve, we have been blessed with a very well-resourced institute because of which we are able to share a very, very unique responsibility that normally a digital architecture department shares everywhere in every subcontinent. Because we are a very well-resourced institute and the only one of its kind in India to host a two years postgraduate program, it puts a larger onus and a unique responsibility on us of utilizing new methods and tools to stretch our disciplinary uh, borders of knowledge production. So the digital architecture department conducts a lot of workshop, lectures, symposium, wherein we ask ourselves a very, very simple question. What more architecture can be? What else architecture can be? Because this opens up to multiple viewpoints and interpretations for us. Our uh, institute thus has become a very natural canvas to showcase your work as a practicing architect, especially trained in digital mediums, as you're not just an architect, but an academician, a committed one, who's making an effort to train graduates to be more competent individuals. With digital architecture gaining a lot of institutional and practical legitimacy, because it has gained legitimacy in practice and institutes, it has drawn a lot of attraction. Along with all the advances that the medium offers, there are also some specific challenges when it comes to architectural pedagogy, which I think you would absolutely share with us. One where students are drawn to the geographically agonistic forms that are being you know, presented and produced around. The students are quite drawn to them. Now that presents a very specific challenge as now more than ever, we have to ask and train students to question about what can be built and what needs to be built so that whatever is being designed and built is relevant both on local and global scale. So that's the biggest challenge. Normally, there's, there's a, a trade-off between the identity of local texture and the aspiration of a global scale. And that's a very unique challenge faced by architects who are trained in digital medium and especially who teach and practice in Asia. All of us are enthused to harness the possibilities of digital conception and production. And uh, we do appreciate and reckon the power of computational technology, which is a great source of individual creativity. But the, at the same time, we have to be mindful of the indigenous character rooted in our socio-cultural context. Though it's not impossible to do both, it's a very precarious balance in academics as well as practice. And your works perfectly show that balance, which, which I'm, I was so happy to look at. 
we in asia grapple with the similar social cultural and demographic constructs both in your part of asia and our part of asia as well and i'm sure architecture in thailand like india is rooted in traditional design influence and at the same time it like us aspires towards a very global or a contemporary aesthetic so it will be interesting based on this premise to see someone like you who's among the first few generation of digital architects who's groomed in contrasting narratives and premise of aa uh, how does he interpret and how does he resist the universalizing tendencies of spectacular architecture that uh, that is being produced in asia and which that digital mediums allow us to produce so i'm very much looking forward to it without much of a forward or a prologue i'd request architect poonam sardesai my very efficient and very a uh, pleasant colleague to kindly introduce the guest speaker of the day architect atta ponsumli welcome please hello atta uh, it's with great pleasure that i am going to introduce you formally other than knowing you at informal levels uh, from 10 years back uh so ata ponsumali is from thailand um he has done as mentioned his masters from the drl uh, aa london he is the founder of 4x design studio in bangkok he is the faculty of architecture at chula longkorn university where he is also the course master and he is the lecturer and visiting faculty at king mon kuts university of technology bangkok um uh, one thing i would appreciate is the way they have named their firm and how they describe their work profile uh, so forex design studio functions as a group of practical architects and inventors with a very flexible style they believe that the new, that any new space will emerge from integration not from pure architecture but also interior and landscape design their projects work around the philosophy that design is a research methodology which should be respectful in terms of context and users from a particular area their projects in thailand and international projects have a variety and complexity in terms of space and material all of them approach new ideas to architecture and users by an experimental process and hence their studio is rightly named for experimental design studio uh, their firm has got numerous awards and publications uh, they've won an award in 2019 uh, for their project at international property awards they have been nominated multiple times for building of the year at arc delhi uh, they have been nominated for i think a few of these projects ata will be presenting they have been nominated for architizer a plus last year 2020 and they also have an article which has been published in the american institute of architect aia project for their clubhouse project in bangkok so without any further delay i welcome my friend uh, someone i look up to in terms of his work and uh, personality to come and present his work for all our students and colleagues welcome ata thank you puna thank you everyone it's my honor to be present my studio works at your university it's like the first international rec- lectures and presentation for our studio thank you very much for inviting us okay so i will share the screen now All right. Um can you see this? Punam? Everyone? Uh yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. So, I think my presentation is about how how to like it's not the formal architectural presentation. It's going to be like a story for my uh from part of my my experiment. Yes, as you know that our studio is foxed or 4x design studio yeah it's come from the for experiment we we try to experiment everything 
even materials, every space or the structure or the interior or the landscape, everything. The project that we did or we are doing now or in the future, we select the project that has the content that we, we can like experiment. But the project that too too much or too commercial, we we, we try to to balance this experiment and commercial projects. Yeah, the first part of my experiment is the academics. As as you know that I'm graduate from the DRL V13 from uh, 2009 to 2011, in the same year as Punam. The agenda at that year is about proto design, how to make the digital and analog to be a prototype. This is uh, very up to date at, at that time because everyone has a digital tools or, in their hands, but how they translate the digital to the analog. So we think that it's very, very trendy agenda for that time. This is our project for the DIL. We start with the friction. As you know, the friction is like to engineering works, but we found that we found these two guys on the YouTube at that time, and he's so inspiring us to design the project. I will show you how they inspire. I think these two guys right now is not continue their clips. Yeah. segment themselves in order to get yes. they have they're talking the something time. about the friction the alternating pages of a phone book that haven't been glued taped or bound really stick together oops sorry oh sorry 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 we are going to try and pull the phone apart but of course i think we're also going to they they to took two books of the, the phone books together layering like this finger joints and they try to pull to win. It's crazy. They had a, a lot of experiments. But this one is craziest. Sorry, I, I have to skip some. some, some part. But you can see that they try to pull it. Yes, and finally, they have 10 minutes to pull that, and it still stick together. Finally, they use a car to pull that phone book. Yes, it's no glue. This is very inspired that how the joy can can be without glue. Yeah. Yes, this is the video that inspired for our project. Everything is start from these fibers. We're talking about the friction, the joy that no glue. So after we, we look at that videos, we try to experiment many type or many principle of friction, 
friction, friction joy typologies in many ways, even uh, three ways or two ways. Or we use even the um, ori origami from Japan and the other materials that we, we try to use the, the friction as a joy. And then we have to apply the, the growth logic to the elements, to the components. And we found that at the mid, at the midterm of the, the DRL, we fail. In the summer, we have to look in the way that friction works in the in the proper in the proper way. So we found that after we fell at the midterm of the, 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 the DRL, we found that the birdness is very perfect friction joints because they create the benefits of the redundancy of the networks in every point that they touch, they create a friction perfectly. Then we experiment more about how the friction joy and the mechanic uh, and the mechanical joy, which one is much better. And we found that the friction joy without the knots and the bolts that create more space for us. So this is the first prototyping that we create in the backyard of the AA. And also we have a series of time lapse to create the model. First time we did the model like one to 10 or one to 20 to make sure that our components, the, the cross component is working. And after that, we build up and scale it up. And also we, we try to experiment how the, the maximum limit of the material itself. We use that at that time is we use a plywood. So we can create the height of this element to like four meters uh, for, for the height. And we can have a span like three and a half meters. So we make sure that our component is perfect. After that, we go to the digital process to create the form or create the system in the digital terms. And also we think that our design has to be real and it should be built in one-to-one -one scale. So we're going to the, the Arab, the engineer in London, and they teach many, many things to us. And one is the program that simulate the structure behavior. This is, we use the ANSYS. Maybe you guys know, know about this program. And also we create the simulation in the processing to check the shear force and the other force that doing with our structure. And finally, we're looking for the site and the site is we selected in the center of Bangkok in the Ceylon Road. We, we try to make a flea market at the center of Bangkok by using our elements. Yeah, this one is our site next to the big uh, park in the Bangkok. So you can see that if you can create a friction that can create the formation of the structure and the space. So you can see that this temporary element can be built and unbuilt in one night or one day. And also we create the parts by using the agent base to create the form. And also these two guys try to create the boots at the flea market. And this is a perspective at the final. And also this one, we have a animation walkthrough to the space. I'm sorry for the resolution because it's like 10 years ago video. So it's not that like high depth. And you can see the structure, how to build. 
and finally we, we got the project yeah this is the one-to-one -one scale all right yeah this is our final perspective to show that how the elements create their space underneath create the columns, we create the overhead plane, we create the floor by using that element. And also this one is the, maybe close the, the sound. Yeah, we, we create the prototyping because our agenda is about when you have the elements, when you have a system, you have to show that the project can be built to be a proto prototyping. So we create this video to show that even you have two people or four people, you can create that kind of fancy space. Yeah, we're going to the shop at the AA. And we create the elements. Maybe I have to skip some, yeah. We cutting, we polish then. And finally, we stick it together by using the friction joint. And this is the time lapse. I remember that at that time it's like minus one degree Celsius, and it's very crazy. We have three or four and four people to create the one to one scale model to show the tutor, to show the tutor. Yes. And finally, we think that our prototyping should be pass the manual book to the other people to create their space by themselves. So we have a volunteers to do that. We give them a manual and they are following the manual and do it, create their space. Yes. Finally, yeah. So this is our manual. It's like an IKEA that you can do it by yourself. If you have the elements, we have the main structure and we have the surface structure element in the blue elements. Yeah, and this is the one-to-one -one scale. The height is about like two meters. Yeah. And this is our team. It's from China and America. Yeah, this is the first part of my experiment. It's uh, academics. And the next one is a teaching. When I graduate from the DRL and come back to Bangkok, and I have the opportunity to teaching in, in Chulalongkorn University, it's my former university. And I'm teaching in the Faculty of Architecture and in the urban design department, I have been outside for teaching uh, first and the second year studio and sometimes going to last year studio. I think it's very challenge to me that how to teach first and second years to understand what is a, in, in the next 10 year trend of design or how they understand the architectonics and the scale everything so my team that create the the course called the meta pattern how to build the environmental design studio the core idea of this studio is about how to decoding the the pattern from the nature or everything in the world if you can decode it and you can find the patterns. You can use that pattern to decide everything. So we have some uh, project that we did. This one is like the pavilion, the shelter that create by using the movement of the snakes. And they use the ten security structure in that design. And also this one is the first year project. 
it's about the body uh, body equipment that they extract the pattern from the nature and make their body suit to do to do something. For example, this one they they, they try to use the mechanical of the frog of legs to to create the bodysuit and they plug in on the lighting also and after that they're scaling up to the shelter we also decide the shelter from the meta pattern from the nature and you can see that it's um, related to the human scale even you sleep you sit or you stand up or you walk and the second year project that we did is like uh, we are going to the master plan of the project. So this is like a housing project that student has to uh, decide for a community. Like there, there are 30 students in the class and they have to decide a project together to be one master plan and create the environment how to live together, how the architecture respond to the environment, and also how people live in the residential project. And after that, we're scaling up to the big scale of the master plan. It's like two square kilometers project. And you can see that this is my professor on, on the left hand. She's um, tried to conduct the model. It's like one to 250 to create the community of the environmental village by using that meta pattern, the pattern from the nature. This is um, the second part of my experiment, the teaching. I think uh, I learned a lot from the student also did they learned a lot from the pattern that they decoded from the nature. So uh, it's like there is no boundary for the design. And also I think the architecture can be worked in the scale of like not to be a big giant building, but I think it should be start from the human scale sit sleep and eat or walking so we try to teach them the basic of the design and then after that they can design whatever they want and i think this is my book will publish on uh september this year Maybe I will send you Punam for, for the book. It's about the meta patterns. Please, please do. So looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, will, I will send you like thank 10 you. books. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Okay. And the third part that I think this is very tough. It's very like totally different from the academic and the teaching. It's very challenge to how to apply that digital world or the academic world or teaching world to the real life. But our studio try to make every single space to be uh, like desired space, not just only the functional space, so I select a few projects from my studio to, to, to show you. Some of the project will be finished this year and maybe next, next month, some project is finished. And some project is like uh, in the two years because it's a high rise building. And after they finish, I will update to my Facebook and maybe you can like go to see that this is like the same as my presentation today. So the first project that I will show you is it's a clubhouse for the housing project called Ban Klang Mueang Seri Thai. 
uh, in Thai words, ban is called for the home, the housing project, and Klang Mueang is it mean the center of city. So this is the project that create the housing project in the center of the city. And our scope is to create the clubhouse, the fitness and swimming pool for uh, 250 housing project. This one we sent to uh, the International Property Award in 2019. And luckily we won the, the project. We are the winner of of the International Property Awards that year. So, yeah, this one is uh, some part of the housing project. You can see that on your right hand has a canal and your right hand is like uh, units of housing. And you can see that we have a clubhouse. It's very small because in Thailand, we have a regulation to control the, the size of the the clubhouse and the green area in, in the project. So the developer tried to like minimize the clubhouse that serve for the, the, the user in, in the project. So they sent out the, the land, the site, and, and we said that, okay, we, we would like to create something that relate to the water and try to create the microclimate in our building. This is a perspective, uh, it's a design brief and the site con uh, considerations. So we think that the idea is should be come from the site and we lift it up. So you can see the, the second image, we lift it up, the fitness on the second floor and we create the circulations, and also we create the holes in the wall, in the facade, because we want the ventilation, we want the wind that flow and take the humid from the swimming pool to create the comfort in our building. So this is a diagram. So you can see that we have a swimming pool and the terrace and the fitness in the second floor. And we have the main circulation, the stair on the left hand. It's very challenging because at that time, there is no, not that much. The architect in Thailand create the swimming pool like semi-outdoor because in Thailand, there is a lot of rain. So you can create the dusty or uh, the dirty to when 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 it's rain, it's going to the swimming pool. So it's very challenge. So we have to create some details of the construction to 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 get rid of this kind of problems. And this is a planning. So you can see that the archive of of the land, we have to decide. The right hand is the road, so we welcome them with the. Uh, the pool and we create the void in the second floor and this is a section i have the diagram to show that how the sections work this one you can see that in thailand the windy is very important for us so you can see that we want the natural ventilation to take the moisture of, from the swimming pool to like um, to create a comfort atmosphere for the building and also the lighting qualities. We, we don't want the heat, we, we just want the lighting. So the courtyard and the hole in the facade help us. And also there's um, the safety for the user in the building when they had uh, the fires. So this area can like take the smoke out, out of the building. So this is our simple idea. It's very simple. So this is a perspective to show that our sketch, our idea from the, uh, from the outside and the courtyard, 
that link to the second floor. So this is the real image. So you can see that in the fitness, you can see the green area of the project. And also you can have a terrace. You can have a sunbed next to the swimming pool. And also the lighting quality in the courtyard, even in the dawn or even in the daytime. And also the staircase, you create the sunlight, uh, the, the glass roof to allow the lighting into the staircase. So there is no need for the lighting. So we save the electrical bills. Yeah, this is at the dawn. So you can see that the lighting and the floor and the space, everything is coherence. Yeah, this is a final image that we took the pictures. And the construction is uh, quite a little bit. This is just to share for you guys. It's not easy that how to make the, the, the glass facade to be like this kind of angle. We lost many, many of the glass to finish this, this one. This is not that easy. And also, yes, we have another gimmicks. And you can see that we, we try to lift up the space for the second floor and we use the, the mirror to, to cladding the columns in the first floor. So it's like everything is camouflage for the first floor. Yeah, this is the main entrance to the, cap, to, to the clubhouse. Yes, she is the final image that to show that the quality of the center wall and the center courtyard. And this one is a staircase going to the second floor, the fitness. So because of the, the massing of, of the architecture, so we have to create the ceiling that is a step to create uh, the dimension more like a step up to create it's the height of the fitness more than you can see. And this one, yes, on, on your left hand is a miller to create the infinity, <laughs> infinity dimensions. So we're cladding the wall with uh, the miller. So to expand the space. Yeah, this is courtyard. So you can see that when you are swimming in the pool, you can connect the people at the fitness and also the outside of the clubhouse in the green area. This is the second clubhouse that we're working on. Um, uh, it's a Glen Pino Pahon Langsit. It's a clubhouse for a developer also. This one is the, the article in in the AIA, the American Institute Association. I'm very proud of that because they emailed me and they want this project to be one of the article. So uh, this is uh, the project that we collaborate with the NIPS landscape to create from the main entrance to the, the clubhouse on your right hand, top right. So create the path and the green and the main park to the clubhouse. So as you can see in the isometric, the diagrams that how we connect the people from the project to our clubhouse. So the landscape create the part, the blue, and also the red one across the bridge and going up and going down to the clubhouse and all the shortcuts to the clubhouse. This is the final trees in, in, in the landscape. So we are looking in, into the, the main building, the clubhouse. You can see that we are designing the same idea, but develop the ideas to, to this project. We create the wall, we create the courtyards, but this project, we have a lot of a, a courtyards in the tiny courtyards 
in every single space. For example, you can see that we have a trees, we have a tree, we have a tree, three courtyards. And also we have uh, the library, living room, and the fitness, like a separate area connected by the courtyard. And the swimming pool in the first floor. Yes, this is the first floor. When you're going into the clubhouse, you can see that there is a swimming pool in the middle and the terrace between and the toilet and also the main staircase to the second floor. Yeah, this is the second floor. You can see when we have the matching of the space, we would like to wrap it because we try to create the private in public. It's very, it's, uh, very trendy words because when people are using the, the clubhouse, they want the privacy, but they still want to see outside and they want to connect to the green, green area. So we think that is our idea is about to create the private in public or public in private to join the courtyards and the functional space together. Oops, sorry. This is a planning. So you can see that one third of the floor plan is a swimming pool and the water. So it's great the ventilation and moisture to the building also the same idea as the, 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 the previous project. And also you can see that the number five, the courtyard, the open to below, create that comfort atmosphere to the building. So in every space, you can open the door and the windows. There is no need for the air condition in this building. Yeah, you can see that the section have a lot of uh, true from first to the second floor space. Also this one. Yeah, this is a final image that we took from the, from the project. So you can see that we wrap the facade, the double facade with the glass and we add the idea of the collocation glass facade to create the graphics on the facade. So you can see that it's two types of glass on the facade. One is the uh, reflective um, glass and another one is a collocation glass laminated together to create the camouflage to the, the trees and the space inside. Then this is the another side of the, the project. As you can see that it's, it's true. It's, it's go, go through the space when you are outside or the inside, but you still have double facade to create the privacy. Yeah, this one is uh, the ramp for the handicaps. And you can see that the curtain wall, the facade, it's like lift up the building, the second floor, and also the staircase that we use, the spiral staircase to be like a sculpture, the, the landmark of the building. Yeah, this is in, in the daytime. It's the daytime front facade. This is from the landscape. You can see that the linkage between the landscape and the building it's quite contrast, but they create the green and the mirror together. It's um, people can walk through and going to the, the clubhouse by using the path or have a jogging in the, in the afternoon or in the evening. Yeah, and this one that we, that I talking about, uh, the staircase, the spiral staircase, it's very like impressed me a lot because uh, you can see that this structure is like cantilever from, 
from the second floor, like three and a half cantilever and connect to the spiral staircase. Uh, the craftsmanship is very like, very difficult. They use the, the flat bar, the very simple sheet of metal and we create the spiral beams that connect to the second floor. And after that, they create the stair one by one. And you can see how they can't leave can deliver the, the staircase. Yes, and this one is the final. So we create the graphic spiral can deliver staircase as the sculpture for the building. Yeah, when I quite love this staircase. I don't know, maybe, maybe because of the can deliver a lot. Yeah. And also this one is the the trees in the middle of the, the, the courtyard. So, and as you can see in the right hand image, you can see the pocket, the, the glass cantilever terrace. We put the, the, the jogging track and the uh, landing track and the bicycle track into that pocket to create the privacy. And when you would like to play that, you can go to that pocket. So you can create your own space and you can see the tree and you can see the swimming pool underneath. Yeah, this one, as you can see the, the space that can deliver from, from the fit nets. Yeah, this one is a fit net that you can looking through to the to the main park of the project and also the pocket space to create the privacy and this is a living room so you can open the, the door you cannot you you have to use um the air conditions all right the next one um it's a restaurant it's uh, maybe you guys know that barbecue um Japanese style barbecue. Right. It's yeah. It's uh, called Grillicious Restaurant. It's in Pattaya. It's a seaside city. Right. So we we got this project, and we got the empty site, and we we are very exciting to create the restaurant. So this is quite big site. It's like uh maybe three hundred and uh three thousand and two hundred square meter site. It's quite big for a restaurant. So we start with the bong fai because it's a barbecue restaurant. So we think that it's very really go to the basic for the fundamental of the idea of how people eat the meat with the barbecue. So we think about the bong fai. And if we have a lot of bong fai, we can create the walls, we can separate the partition with that wall by in the middle of the space is the bonfire. It's the table for user to eat the barbecue. And after that, it's stretching up the, the wall to be a building walls, to be a landscape, to be a structure, to be the extension area of the project. So you can see that the, the program that we fill into the space of the bonfire space. So it's connect to the part from the streetscape and even you can drive to the project. And we still use the idea of the ventilations as you can see on the blue arrows. It's allow us to uh, create the path of the wind, the ventilation, the natural ventilation to the project. And you can see that we put the eat spade, the dining spade in between the wall of the bonfire. And also think about the climate of the Thailand, the sunlight. So we create the shade and the roof 
to be like a gable and create some uh, lighting void on the top of the gable. So we save the electrical bills also. Yeah, this is a uh, isometric of the, the projects. So you can see that this uh, my cursor is a dining space, welcome space, and dining space. And also, because of the bunch, the budget of the project is empty. It's like the owner said, there is no enough budget to to create more dining space. So we leave the trust. This one is my cursor. The trust. And when he has the money, they fill up the roof and the windows. So we can create the extension of the project. Yeah. This is a planning. So you can see that we, we have a horizontal line that separate the space and create the partitions, create a zoning of the space, and also create the wind, create the ventilation part to the building. So this, uh, the number two is the parking, that it's an open space. So we think that behind the building is the number 11, should be the open space also to create the courtyard again. Because in Thailand, the, the, the climate is very important to decide something. So this is a patio section, it's like the animations. So you can see that from the front of the building, going up to the lobbies, going to the main dining, going to the courtyard behind the building. Yeah, this is our sections to show that you can see, we create uh, the Y on the roof. We create the uh, ventilation to the building. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, the organization chart of the, how the concept develop and merge to the structure and merge to the architectural space, to the architectonics. This is the final image that we took last year. This is the space at the courtyard behind the, the, the building. So you can see that we select the trees, we select the outdoor furniture, and we keep the wall from the inside to the outside. And you, you, you can see that the wall is connect every space together. It's not just separate, it's connect every space together. And you can see the big wall that create the zoning of the dining area. It's a privacy area. They can have a party at this area. And you can see it's the wall, the scale of the people. This is the front of the, the, the project. You can see that you can walk from the parking or you can walk from the street, street. So this is the main entrance. And this one that I, I, I said, this is an extension area, maybe in the near future. So you can see that we leave the truss on the roof and we leave the structure, the beam for the floor. When they have a money, when they have a budget, they just cover it. And also you can keep the tree inside of the space also. And this is the, the way to the service area, the, the toilet, and this is a nighttime image. So our studio is also designing the interior for this project. So you can see that the link between outside and inside. So this is a lobby. This is, we would like people come into the, the bonfire. You can see it's a charcoal space with the uh, fires to create uh, the emotional space to the lobby for, for the project. 
when the people come inside, they, they're getting like want to eat. And after that, this is um, the entrance for the dining zone. So you can see that there is a contrast with, between the lobbies and the dining area. Yeah, this is a charcoal. Okay. So we call this is a charcoal hall or the bonfire hall. And this is the bar, the beverage bar that next to the, the lobby area. Yeah, this is the image to, from the courtyard. So you can have a party outside yeah, and this is the main dining area. We create the, the wooden ceiling to be more Japanese style that match to the, the, the food menu that owner would like to be. And, and we selected the, the furniture to be more Japanese style. Yes, that is the first, our first restaurant. The second one, is the um, uh, we call the Jie Tai Farm. Jie Tai Farm is the biggest agriculture provider in Thailand. They would like to create the restaurant, and it will be open this um, May. Again, we got the the sign, but this one is totally different. It's very tiny. So you can see the scale from the chop house building, this one, and the sky train here. So you can see that there is not the big plot of land. We can create just only 300 to 400 square meters. So we think that this is the first option that um, owner said to us that create the restaurant maximum. All right, so we think that should be in the three stories because the first story had to be like uh, some sitting area, a kitchen, a service area. And the second floor is a, a dining area, the meeting room or special room for the VIP. And the third one is a terrace. So we divided the space into uh, the area, the zoning of, of the requirements. So we can have a shape of the building right here. And we think that because we think the circulation inside of the building and inside of the restaurant, it's very simple. People just come inside and they just like don't know directions and they want a staircase and the elevators. But I, I think in the opposite way that the circulation, it's um, it a space. We can show that. We can create the uh, concept area. We can it's not just only the walkway or it's just not only the vertical circulation to connect first and the second and the third floor. So we put the circulation outside. We put the circulation front of the building to show that, to show the circulations. So we can save the circulation inside the building and we cre can create some concept space to show the people front of the building. So we final the mass of the, the project and this one. So you put the, uh, we put the glass to show the circulation. And you can see that this is the sky train, the garden and the headquarter behind our restaurant. So it's like a sculpture front of the headquarter of the, the Jiatai and it's a showcase and the restaurant at the same time. So I will show you the, the animation of this project. It's very, I just finished this one like last month. Okay. So you can see the circulation that we create 
the stairs front of the building, we create the, the line that from the first floor connect to the second floor and going up to the third floor. So you can see that in, in the second floor, we create the partitions and we put the curtain wall. Yeah, at the front of the restaurant, we have a merchandise space. We have uh, vegetables, we have the agri ag agriculture product to sell at this restaurant. And when you come inside, you can see the open space that connect first and the second floor. And this one is a um, merchandise area. And we have a bar, a beverage bar. And yeah, this one is the sitting area for the first floor. You can see that when we use a glass to connect inside and the outside, it makes the tiny space bigger. Yeah. And when, we, when you turn back, you can see the open space to connect the first and the second floor. Yeah, when we going up by using the feature staircase. You can see on, on your left hand, we create the uh, sculpture, the, the, the racing that put the seat. It's like a seat galley inside. And then going up to the second floor. Also on your right hand, we have some shelf to sell the products. And we have a tree in the middle of the space. So you can see that we try to connect inside and outside. Even this building is just only 350 square meters. We, we try to like create uh, the space, the, the quality of space. And also we connect to the terrace and the green wall behind it. Yeah, that this one is a is a kitchen, it's a live kitchen. So you can have a chef table here. You can have a chef to cook something very special for you. And also, you can see that the open space, the double volume, connect first and the second. And when we when we go up to the third floor, we can step from the roof of the staircase. And you can see the galleries. The gallery will show the timelines of, of the, the, the companies. And we still create the pockets from the CEO of the, the, the company to see everything in the restaurant. And yeah, this one is going through the, the gallery, the, the timeline. how the, the seed come from and how the company established from what years and go outside. And this uh, floor is for the, the management or the VIP person. So we have the outdoor terrace for the dining. So you can see the sky train on your right hand and the garden in front of you. Yes, this is a Jia Dai Farm restaurant from. So. Okay, we go into the next project. It's the Hay School in Bangkok. Hay School is a Finland franchise school. It's, it's, a, it's in the Finland. So they will open the school this September. So right now we are constructing the, the foundation. So it's very challenge that we have a five to six months to finish 2000 square meters school. This is existing. We have a trees, a lot of trees. It, sorry, it's in, in the Thai words. I, I can I, I have 
I can not type in the, the, the English. So the idea, the core idea of the school is the classroom. So we try to experiment the how many ways to uh, decide a classroom for the kids because this one is the international international school for uh, the children from uh, two years to five years old. So this is um, uh, we experiment the the classroom. On your left hand, you can see that why we cannot have a boy or the 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 space in the middle maybe teachers or storage can be in the middle so we can create a teaching space in the middle of of the classroom and any shape you want for example circle square or the zigzag or a cross and you can see on the right hand after we have a middle space we create, we separate the space into four parts and we have a partition because when you would like to use just only one classroom, you put the partition to separate the space. And you can see on the left hand, we create the space to four classroom and on the rooftop, we have the skylights and the trees because we would like children to touch the nature. So we have two options. We experiment two options. First one, there is no staircase up to the roof. Another one, there is uh, the staircase from the classroom up to the top, up to the playground on the rooftop. So children can see it's like they're learning under the trees. They can see, they can touch, they can feel, they can smell, they can listen the leaf of the trees like moving. So it's encouraged the children to learning natural way. And after that, we put the classroom to stacking and create the infinity loop ramps you can see the directions on, on your right hand. We create, uh, it's a loop, the infinite loops uh, of the ramps. So children, teacher, dad or mom can like go like infinity. You can meet each other at the same point. The start point and the end point is the same. So yeah, this is the final uh, architecture that we, we are now constructing now. You can see that we have the loop of the, the ramps outside and the, the classroom with the skylights and the trees. And yes, we were very concerned about the materials because it's about the children. So we would like to use the material from Thailand. For example, the bricks or the wooden or the natural material from every part of the Thailand. Northern, southern part of the Thailand to create uh, the natural space for children. And this is the final perspective. So you can see that it's very uh, humble and very Scandinavian. I mean, the minimal space for the children. And in the front, we have the cafe to um, for the for the parents when they when they come to the school to wedding the their children and this is the, the back courtyard of the school and yeah this one this is a classroom that we try to experiment you can see that children can be like one space four rooms or partition to be four rooms yes i have animations so this uh, front from the from the road and you can see that the the trees that you see there is the existing existing trees 
So this is a parking area and a drop-off area. Uh, when the parents uh, come to the school, and you can see when they pass the gate to the courtyard, we have a swimming pool on the left hand. And you can see that the swimming pool can be closed to be um, the stand for the children to be like have an amphitheater. And you have a screen to, to, to project something. And this is a um, canteen for children. Yeah, this is a cafe in front of the, the project. And this is the administration section on the left hand. And also we have some space for trail room for the children. So it's like a unit of Lego, children can be like put it in together. And this is the staircase up to the second floor. And also you can go up to the second floor by using the ramps, the circulations. So when you're going up to the second floor, you can see that it's a classroom. So in the middle of the classroom, the, we decided to be the teacher rooms and have a, some storage inside. And because of this is a school for the children, so we have to punch some walls to be a prey station for the kids. And, and again, you can see that our project is uh, try to connect inside and outside as much as we can. So you can see through space from the inside to the outside. And this, again, this is an infinity loop lamp up to the rooftop. When you're going up to the rooftop, we have uh, artificial glass on top or a real tree on top. And you can see the skylight looking down to the to the classroom. Yes, this is it will be open this September. I will update the uh, image into my Facebook again, maybe if you want to see the real one. Okay, the next project is a housing project. It's a villa project for villas. So again, we have a site and this one is quite big. And the, the clients say that he want four villas. It's very special villas to be like a homogeneous villa. The same language of the design of the villa. So they try many solutions for the mass study, the experiment, many types of the planning, but um, the client's not happy yet. He said that it's connect just only the swimming pool. So we're coming back and think about how to connect that all four houses together. So we think that there is the, the line that connect four sides of the, the land. And then we're stacking up the first floor, second floor, third floor. And we bring it back, the swimming pool. So now we can have four villas that is the same line that is connect together, this one. So client is very happy because he can see the connect between first, second, third, and Fort Villa, and also the swimming pool that connect together. So this is the perspective. So you can see the light that is like connect together.
the massing of the the villas. Oh, sorry, uh, this one. And this is the planning. It's very simple, but the but the idea is that we connect the massing of the villa together. This is the last project that I will be present. Maybe this is too long for you. This is um we call Sena BP condominium. It's uh, one of the the development in Thailand is a bigger project that we are doing now. It's a high-rise building. It's a housing condominium. Maybe in in the other countries, it will call, it's not the same, but in Thailand, the luxuries or upper class of the housing, we, we call it the, the condominiums. So we have a site that uh, very exclusive because we have Chao Phaya River, on your left hand is the main river of Thailand. So we can have a uh, view from, from the river and the city view also on the right hand. So this is very typical high rise building or the condominium housing in Thailand. So we have the green area, we have uh, the podium that has a car park and we have the, the housing unit top stacking up. This is very typical diagrams, but we think that this kind of program is very basic. We would like to focus on the units of housing. So this is typical housing units in, in, in Bangkok. So we think that why people, when they come out and uh, they stand in the terrace of the, the unit, they have a limited will the scene from, from the, the room. So this is like uh, too much idea because first time we said, why we don't just can't leave the, the terrace outside? The developer said, this is a huge budget to put into the project. So, all right. And also when the units come together, it's similar. It's create some like um, union view and the scenario for two rooms. So we cut it off and we create the new chair of the, the, the terrace, the balcony by the general balcony and the pink one is the new balcony. So yeah. We got this facade and the balcony for the condominiums. So yes, at the, the, the beginning of the project, they agree with that, but when we developed, there is some, some issue about the, the budget and the construction techniques. So they have to develop to be more like reduce the, the ideas. So this is uh, a first idea perspective. And yes, we try to apply some scripts or uh, the coding from parametric design to, to the project. So we think that uh, what is the benefit from this uh, grasshopper definitions? So we found that we create the facade or the partition of the, the car park at the podium to create the, the angle, the wheel of the people to, to not see the cars that parking inside. So it's the, the yellow people when he on the angle, so he can see just only solid. It's, it's, a uh, it's, it's about to play with the angle of the, the, the angle of the facade. So is this the way that we use for this project for the, the, the scripting or the grasshopper? 
And as you can see, as we create the facade and the landscape from the 19, uh, 1819 landscape. So we create uh, the screen that has uh, the different angles in every element of the project, the landscape, the car park, the landscape on the building. Yeah, this is the final one that we, we are doing for the permission drawing to submit the government to build. All right, this is all my presentation. I hope that you guys not sleep. <laughs> Not at all, not at all. What a lovely presentation. Excellent, very neat, very coherent, very clean work. <laughs> and it, it very categorically shows your commitment to detailing. You know, we often dream of very clean work, but yeah. eventually when you convince the client and what happens on site <laughs> is a completely different story. So that's wonderful, your engagement, your you know, commitment to be very neat and clean and anticipate issues. Thank Excellent. I, I, I couldn't have asked for a fresh uh, perspective on architecture. And it's, it's wonderful, wonderful. So Maybe. many moments I went, wow, in the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Puna. <laughs> wonderful. I had, I had so many questions uh, to keep asking you. But every project you went on explaining, you touched upon material, you touched upon structure, you touched upon context sustainability without calling it sustainability is just inbuilt in all your projects so i mean it's like you touched upon everything diagramming was beyond i mean <laughs> I felt yes. like the back in the studio you know working like on diagramming it was and your photos they actually look like renders like once or twice, I was wondering if this is a render of the if it's a photo i mean the cleanliness even in the construction quality is uh, is mind blowing no, I was actually admiring the sky quality <laughs> in Thailand. I was I was quite amazed by the renders. I said, how could they have such a wonderful sky quality? <laughs> but, but yeah, of course, of course. It's a it's a complete packaging and it's a complete need to work. We 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 can certainly take questions, Puna ma'am. Shall we? Yeah. Yeah. If, if yeah. Our students have any questions, or ma'am. Hi, I saw Takbir is joining. Hi, Takbir. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so I was just wanting to ask you one specific question. Uh, you have a temperament for experimentation. Your practice is, uh, it kind of manifests a lot of inclination to experiment. What are the challenges that you face when you convince a client? I'm, I'm sure even in Thailand, as in India, there's a lot of convincing which happens and we, which needs to happen when you convince a client of a project and the kind of experimentation you are doing. So how is it at your end? How do you do it? Is it an uphill task? Um, 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 yeah. For me, maybe this is not the, the, the direct answer, but in, in Thailand, most of the, the problem when we are doing the project is uh, the, the client, the owner is not understand what we are doing. Because as you know, the architecture is like, we, we took the money to build up our dreams, <laughs> yeah. right? Right, right, so right, right. It's like, it's a ghost. It's not existing yet. <laughs> True. You're going to see that when it's already finished. And yeah. so the problem is all, always happen along the project. The, the, but for me, the, the biggest problem is about budget because, um, when you're doing some experiment ideas or the space or the materials, it's going to be expensive. It's truth. It's a truth. It's, uh, but uh, sometimes we have to tackle this kind of problem with the, um, how can I say? It's a detour. It's not like direct, but detour. So, some some clever detour, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> for example, for my project, most of the project, it's there's less budget. How can I, how can I manage that budget to create something wow for the clients? Um, yeah, this this one is a 
the most important problem for me. And the other is it's a tiny problem for me. <laughs> but for, for, for the design, because of my studio has, um, we, we don't have like 50 architects, we have a few architects. So everyone has like energetic, they has a power, they would like to work, they, they want to see when it construct. So that commitment is very, very high. So I don't worry about the, the teams. I don't worry about the construction because we have the experience. I worked like more than 10 years. So I think I quite familiar with the Thai construction. But the only thing that I cannot control is uh, the client, the, the budget. But, but, we do but I'm, yeah, but I'm sure it will ease out in, in due course of time. You've just put in 10 years of practice, all of you put together. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time. Things will ease out. And uh, the word that you do experimentation within the gamut of what the clients would understand is very important. You may be open to whatever kind of experimentation that AI has taught you or you've kind of learned it yourself over the years. But experimentation, which is convincing and which has got an universal appeal is the, is the trick, is the key here. Excellent, excellent work. Yes, Poonam, ma'am, you can ask your question. For, for, for example, Poonam, um, the, the, the script from the grasshopper, if you are a student or you are the, maybe you, know, you can say, oh, wow, this is a, a scripting from the grasshopper. But the developer said, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> true. He doesn't give a damn. He doesn't give a damn. I yeah. don't care. I just want to like uh, protect the, the car park area with the cheapest budget. Mm -hmm. So you do that. Even I show that script, they're like, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. Uh, I'm getting quite a few questions. Uh, are the regulations very restrictive in Thailand or are they flexible? Are the regulations in Thailand restrictive or are they flexible? Sorry? Uh, the regulations that you have to follow, the building regulations in Thailand. Bylaws. Hmm. Bylaws. Mm -hmm. Are they very rigid? Are they very restrictive? Or are they flexible? Um, I can say that it's very stupid. <laughs> Sorry to say that. But uh, because of Thailand is like uh, they, they, they copy or they're following the, the regulation from American or the other part of, of the world. So some 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 items, I, I think this is not up to date and it's not makes any sense uh, right now. But most uh, we have to do very strict about the regulations. We cannot like do anything. But, but it's not the same as the Singapore. Maybe the Singapore is 100, we are like 80, something like that. <laughs> it's some flexible, but it's not too much. Yeah, yeah. Not contextualized, yeah. Uh, Nishwari, your question I will answer in the studio. It's very specific. <laughs> uh, thought so, thought so. Because I know Atta's project and <laughs> talking about reciprocal structure. So we can do that later. Uh, do all the spaces, Atta, need to be air conditioned? Sorry? To, all to be air conditioned but i've seen uh, projects everything is not air conditioned you have semi-open spaces also so um honestly in thailand every project we need the air conditions but uh we can save in in, in terms of uh, if your space is um comfort enough so you you have you have no to, to open the air condition. You can open the door, you can open the windows. So it's, it's, it's like in, in UK, we have the heater, but if we have a comfort in, inside of a room, we, have, we, we don't have to, to open that, it's the same. So- 
or do you need to give in like heat calculations or you know like in dubai and places like that uh, where you need to do that for your buildings so yes, is yes, there something yes. like that yes. yes we have we have to calculate the the load of the air conditions yes we we have to yeah I guess most of his projects. That's why included the courtyard, which was a, a kind of a climate controlling tool, yes. uh, which, which is a very good extract of traditional architecture. This is exactly what I was saying. That when we look at uh, you know geographically agonistic kind of architecture, you just you just make a form and you plant it, and then it stops being coherent and relating to whatever the traditional wisdom is. And and your work is a quite antithesis. You have taken all the traditional wisdom. Plugged it in your concepts and are still experimenting with material. And I'm sure with with coming age and times, you're going to experiment further. You're going to really push those boundaries because they, uh, as you go ahead in your practice and accumulate years of experience, the convincing part becomes very easy, and the faith of the client is is the uh, it it loosens his purse strings, right? <laughs> and that's where you get a scope to play and experiment. So I'm, I'm sure that's that's to happen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. right we can we can call it a day ma'am i okay. think uh, we're done with the questions yes thank you so much thank you so much ata for such a fresh work for such a wonderful perspective you know uh, on issues and uh, though though we may not have had a very specific discussion about what mediums what tools especially about digital tools and the way you use it in unseemingly digital product uh, projects i'm i'm sure there's there's a lot of concept generation using of analytical diagramming and as i understand it's a cohort of architects working together so even convincing the person in the front who's an architect about your idea and pitching your story requires a lot of clarity and that clarity was very very evident thank you so much for bringing home that point because in academics we are telling students about clarity and objectivity of design and for for i i think here onwards i'll just show you a presentation or your uh, your or your video and say this is what i meant when we said clarity of work and and our job is done so thank you so much for driving home that point so beautifully thanks a ton for your time and i formally acknowledge you i also thank poonam as always uh, thank you for for organizing this coordinating this i'll i'll really thank poonam supriya and of course mahesh sir i'm sorry at the same in the same breath i'll say thank you and sorry both to mahesh because we've been harassing him all this time and he's the one person who's coordinating all the efforts of online going online not just that everything practically so thank you so much mahesh sir and a big thanks to dr kashyap who is the principal of this college and it's because of him that we are able to do what we need to do in digital architecture digital architecture i'm sure ata you know is very resource intensive and had we not had the belief of what dr kashyap stands by we wouldn't have been able to do whatever we do and it will be great to have you back sometime in person in our college poonam is doing fantastic work and you should you should actually come and see uh, i think in india students are a little shy of documenting it the way on social media the way they should but poonam's work is great so please come over and see my team's work it's a beautiful team and i thank my team most importantly and use this platform to do so today thank you so much everybody thank you for your time friends yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry to interrupt uh, i would like uh, everyone to uh, turn on their camera if they wish to so that i can have a screenshot yeah yeah, yeah of course okay Oh, stuck here. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I will just unmute her so that she can. Absolutely, that's the least that we can do for you, Thakbir. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ata. Very nice Hi. to see you. Very nice to see you. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I've been following your work. It's really Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> all right wonderful let me just take a screenshot here just a minute sir let, let them all yeah 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 log okay. in don't worry you all are beautiful trust yourselves <laughs> <laughs> prerna ayushi divyani
Switch on your videos, girls. Come on. All right. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Good. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.